Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to 75 South Gardening. In today's video, we'll be starting the container garden right here on the back porch. So the first thing we're going to be doing today is making our own soil mix. So this is a basic soil mix that anyone can make. It's simply peat moss, perlite, cow manure by black cow. And you can also add your own compost. But today, we're only going to be using the black cow, bone meal, and a little all-purpose. Now in the next clip, I'll show you guys another way that you can mix this with extras like wood ash for potassium compost from your own yard you can even add worm castings but for that what i like to do is add worms got compost right here this right here is old potting soil so i'm gonna mix those two with a little peat moss and a few other things and plant my bell peppers. Now that I have the oil soil mixed in with the perlite, compost, and peat moss, I like to add wood ash for potassium. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in really good and then I'll show you all my last two ingredients. Now this particular soil mix should cover about 20 square feet in one of my raised beds. And 20 square feet is just enough for two cups of the fertilizer. And these are nine foot raised beds. So what I've decided to do was add four cups of the all purpose and two cups of the bone meal. Now on the back of the bag, it says add one cup per 10 square feet. Now this is about 20 square feet of soil. So I've decided to add four cups instead of two. So I have four cups of the all purpose and two cups of the bone meal. Now all I have to do is mix it in really good. And just like that, I have a simple ready to use potting mix that could feed three months or more. Now I added extra fertilizer because when I add extra, I've noticed that the plants grow faster and it really gives it that extra boost that you need during the hot temperatures in the summer so that your plants won't stress out. And that's all there is to making your own potting soil. Peat moss, compost, perlite, a little wood ash, and some slow release fertilizer. Now for those of you that don't have compost piles or access to compost, you can always find black cow at your local nursery. Also, you can go on Facebook Marketplace and search for a farmer in your area that may have horse, chicken, or goat manure that has been composted for at least three years. Now that I have my soil ready to go, I can go ahead and drill some holes in my new containers here. Now these are just simple buckets that I got from the Dollar Tree. And what you want to do is drill holes in the bottom for drainage. If not, you're gonna rot your roots on your plants and they're going to end up wilting and dying. So these are the transplants that I'll be planting in my containers today. There's bell peppers, tomatoes, and back here, these are the collars that will be going into my raised beds. So I'm gonna start breaking this stuff down, soaking these tomatoes so that I can pull them apart. On the left side here, these are all aromas. These are marglobes. 
Now right here in the middle, these are red, yellow, orange, and green peppers. And here's more cucumbers that will also be planted. And right here is the world's largest carrot harvest. So I've decided to go ahead and plant nine of my determinate tomatoes here and 12 of my peppers here. I may even plant peppers in these three containers in the back. That way you guys can see the difference in yield and size with the larger container versus the smaller ones here. And once I water these in good and get everything transplanted, I'll cover everything up with cedar mulch. Now when watering in your fresh soil, you want to make sure that you're watering deeply and letting it soak in for about 30 minutes. Then you want to come back over it again. You can even water it a third time if you like. Because even though this looks wet, it's actually still dry in the center. So you want to make sure you let it soak in and then you come back and water it again. Now that I have everything watered in good, I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes. Then I'll come back out here and water it in one more good time and that's it. Now another tip is to simply water in your transplants before transplanting. This will help prevent transplant shock. So if you've been transplanting your transplants without watering them first, that could be a reason why your plants are wilted and going into shock and not growing the right way. It could also be the reason why your new transplants have stunted growth. All right, y'all, so I have everything transplanted except for the final three tomato plants. Now while doing this, I thought that my phone was recording, but it wasn't. So for anyone that has never grown tomatoes, you wanna make sure that you're burying these as deep as possible. Now the reason for that is, if you look closely here at the stem, you're gonna notice little hairs. Those little hairs are called trichromes. And when they come in contact with moisture in the soil, they will form into roots. So from here on down, there will be roots and that will help this plant anchor itself down better into the soil to protect it from being blown over and broken by strong winds. It will also create a stronger rooting system for your plant as well. Now there's one other way that you can transplant your tomato transplants. And it's simply planting them sideways. Especially if you have plants that may have fallen over while growing and they've molded into that shape because they've been sitting like that for so long. What you wanna do is just lay it down just like that in the soil, sideways. Cover it up, and within a day or two, this will perk back up like that and grow just fine. You can also remove the lower leaves and push them down into the soil, and over time those will break down, and the plant can also feed off of that. The last step to simply add mulch. Now the mulch is going to keep the soil cool and moist at all times and help this soil mix retain moisture. Without the mulch, your plants are gonna dry out faster and you're gonna be outside watering more often. And that's pretty much it for today's video, you guys. Always remember to plant your garden with your health in mind. And for those of you that are new here, don't forget to like and subscribe.